I'll bring the wine, you bring the glasses. What a great time we'll have while the last us. I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cab. Hi, I'm Joanne, and this is Call Me a Cab, a show about tasting wine without intimidation. Today on the show, we'll be trying three wines and pairing them with foods based on suggestions from the internet. I also have a special guest today, Kyle Von Elzi, who you may know from Pen15 Season 2. If you're new to the show, welcome. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, thanks a lot and welcome back. Let's get started. And here's Kyle. Ah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Big fan. Super excited to be here. Drink some wine. He is a big fan. He's the reason we started filming again. He's like, I'm vaccinated and I'm ready <laughs> to drink. You're my first guest back. Oh, wow. You're my first guest since February 2020. So long ago. I know. Wow. I know. But welcome. I'm super excited that you're here. Have you done wine tasting before? I did it once and I highly underestimated wine tasting. I thought it was like, oh, you know, wine tasting, snobs. I didn't make it past the first winery. Your boy was floored. So <laughs> I am scared, yeah. but also prepared and ready. <laughs> All right, we'll take care of you. So our first wine is the Meinklang Prosa 2020 from Burgenland in Austria. It's on the Austria-Hungary border. The cool thing about this is it's from a biodynamic farm that's in a national park called Neusiedlersi something mm. national park. Give <laughs> I got, it a half, round of I got applause. about half of it. Round of applause for just saying it. <laughs> Thank you. Try. Impressive. So this is natural, biodynamic, and vegan. Did you know wines weren't vegan? I thought all wines are vegan. That's what I thought they're too, because they're made with grapes. There's a process called fining in which they get rid of this haziness where they introduce something and it basically, the molecules of the haziness stick to the molecules of whatever they introduce and then they suck that out. But when they do that finding, they use things like casein, gelatin, or fish bladder that are animal based. Uh -huh. So even though they're not currently still in it because they were used, vegans don't go near that. So when a wine says vegan, it means they haven't done that. I, so. ju I just got a master's course TED talk in three minutes. <laughs> so there we go. Welcome to my, woo, Ooh. whoa, look at this, look at this. I didn't know what to expect. Look at you alchemist right here. Oh, I like that. It's so pretty. Okay, so I'm really excited to try this. Yes, please. Oh my God. And look at the fizzy. It did say that it was fizzy somewhere in the paperwork that I was looking at. The normal thing with wines is smell them and you'd look at them and you swirl them. I don't know on the bubbly wines if you swirl them or not because I, I feel like that's just going to pop the bubbles. Listen to the fizzes. Oh, that sounds fun. And see what octave is And baritone. I swirled it anyway. Okay, so smell it and tell me if you smell any fruits, any spices, or anything else. It smells like a good time. I just got it on my lip last <laughs> night. <laughs> mm. It's fizzy, but it's light fizzy. It's not like champagne fizzy. Yeah, but this makes me want to go like on a bikini on a beach or a boat. On a bikini? <laughs> yeah, and then like just, just live my life. What does it taste like to you? I've tasted more fizz than anything right in the first sip. So fizz is a little bit overpowering. And then when you let that go away, then the flavor kicks in. And this is a rosé? This is a rosé. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It tastes a little bit grapefruity and a little bit watermelony maybe. What do you think of this? I like it, it's fuzzy. It's not my favorite, sorry guys. Great job though, but it's good. I definitely can see myself drinking it. Yeah, yeah, I think it is good. And what the internet said paired well with a rosé is a Gouda mushroom tart. I know you're not a huge mushroom fan. No, no, I'm down for the cause. So what I'm curious is take one, have a bite, and then have a sip of your drink. Tell me if it changes the flavor of the drink at all for you. Okay. The crackers are a little dry. Who wants a moist cracker? <laughs> <laughs> well. It's not as fuzzy. It's kind of nice. It kind of kills the fizz a little bit. Oh, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get more of the juice. It doesn't entirely taste like a rosé to me. Really? Yeah. It screams rosé to me. Does it really? Mm-hmm. It's a little cranberry-ish. Oh, because of the tartness? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. It's not an awful tartness. No, it's delicious. I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that. And you were just okay with it. I'm okay. Okay. It's a hot day today and this is very refreshing. Like you yes. want to pound it a little bit, right? Yeah. I'm telling you, man. Bikini yeah. on the boat. This, this is it. Maybe I like a lot of sunscreen for yours truly because <laughs> that direct sunlight is not my friend. <laughs> All right, kids, uh, on to the next wine. So next wine is Caretaker Cabernet Sauvignon from Paso Robles. I would love to tell you more about this wine, but I literally couldn't find information about it. I tried for a while and then I just stopped trying because I thought, whatever, we have it and we're going to drink it. But the reason I bought it is because it's called Caretaker. Ah, <laughs> see, I heard that in my head, but I want to put that out there. What's up, Andrew? We worked in K 
Caretakers, which was a web series we did together. We did, yes. Yeah, so yeah, so. shout out to Andrew and Ed. And this is just from Trader Joe's. I don't know anything special about it. Who knows, might be good. Why not? We'll see. You're selling me here. I'm expecting here. We're going to see what happens. Oh, okay. Oh, while I'm opening this, I'm going to ask you a question. Let's do it. Do you remember the first time you ever drank? Just like in life? In life. Oh, God. Yeah, actually, I do. Oh, man. We were on some kind of like little cruise to like, like your family? my family yeah 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 but like you know it was like the party cruise they had like little pre-made margarita mixer and they were just squirting it in everyone's mouth and i looked at my mom and she was like eh. and i was like okay give it to me and i was like ah i got it and i was like ugh, this is disgusting how old like 12 maybe something like that <laughs> something unreasonable honestly you're a lot older than most of our guests that first have a drink a lot of guests have tried it at such a young age because it's part of a religious ceremony Okay, look at it this time. Let's see what we think of the color. I like it. It's dark and red. Very dark, kind of pinky near the edges. The strongest smell to me, I think, is the alcohol smell. <sighs> Can you smell any fruits or spices or anything? Are you tasting already? Damn oh, it. I'm gone. I've oh, been oh, tasting. I want to <laughs> know what you think of the smell. I know. It is, oh. You have to answer the question. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I got lost in the sauce. But what does it smell like? Obviously grapes. But it's very, very subtle. I, to me, I maybe smell like, I want to say chocolate and fig, but there's chocolate and fig sitting right on the table. But that is kind of what I smell. Kyla's right. This is the first time I'm smelling grapes. Okay. Validation. All right. Thank cool, you. cool, cool. I mean, Delicious. and it's full of grapes. Oh, it's good. Mm. Taste-wise, everybody notes? It's very smooth. Yes, it's, it's, it's smooth, almost like it's subtle. If you took the it's sugar out of strawberries. Smooth. Yeah. I've never conceptually thought of that, but you might be onto something. It's like you're tasting Bob Ross's voice. Bro. Wow. wow, it's happy, it's subtle, it's powerful. Yeah. This is decent. So whatever I don't know about this wine, I feel like they did a good job. Yeah, let's leave, let's leave the mystery. <laughs> whatever y'all did, yeah. keep it going. It's not sweet, but it, it has like a hint of This may be the stupidest sweetness. thing I've said in a while, but when I drink this, I feel like the ball of a really wet ink pen just riding very smoothly. I that. You know when you get that one pen that sucks, you gotta lick it a couple times, like shit, work, work, work. Mm -hmm. This one is like, pop right that out, out and you're just you're smoothly out. just signaturing it. That's, that's beautiful. What it, that's what it tastes like to me. That's a win just on the wine, drinking it by itself. All right, so now we're gonna pair it. What it says on the internet that pairs well with a Cabernet is a dark chocolate. Let's go ahead and grab a piece, see what you think of that, and then follow it with your wine and see what it does to the wine. Hopefully something good. I have a whole picture of my mouth. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to talk for an hour. Oh, that's crazy. Oh. What did you think of the chocolate? Chocolate's very rich. A little too rich for my blood. It is rich. But because of that richness, once I had a sip of this, man, it was like white river rafting. It just started hitting some things. Oh, to me, it made it go tart. Mm. Who made this recommendation? The internet did. It, it increases the chocolate value, I feel like. It makes the chocolate It made the potent. chocolate taste better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, for that's sure, funny. Sure. Yeah, it made the chocolate better, but I didn't like what the chocolate did to the wine so much. I think that's fair. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right about that. Which, will you like the wine afterwards? Yeah. Okay, and seeing what I think, this is the case. Cause, and we're very different in our taste. And it's funny because that's why you should just try wine. I always talk about like wine without intimidation because it's so intimidating. You're like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to like it. Mm -hmm. If I'm bringing wine to a dinner or a party, I don't know if they're going to like it. They might. They might not. It's okay. Just try it. See what you think. Because we just had three different experiences. I definitely think I would do it without the chocolate, just because I feel like the chocolate Detracted. It, yeah, it, it was a great experience, but it just started contrasting and enhancing yeah. in ways. Whereas mm -hmm. this wine on its own was just like. To be fair, Caretaker did not recommend the chocolate because they didn't say anything on the internet. They're like one of those people that doesn't have social media. You're like, how do you exist without existing on the internet? Oh, wow. Okay. How much was that bottle? About 10 bucks. That's yeah. a solid ten dollars, man. Ten dollars, yeah. you can get ten tacos, or you can get ten that. Yeah. That is worth it. <laughs> you can get one insane. of that, or yeah, ten yeah. tacos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, moving on. <laughs> the next wine is Hidden Legend, the King's Mead. Now, I don't know if you know about mead. I know you know about mead. Somewhere in life, I learned that they make wine in all fifty states. So I started digging to see what they make in the different states, and I found mead. I'm like, what the hell is mead? I think all meads are honey based. Correct but they're not always exclusively honey. Mm -hmm. But it's honey wine. This is honey wine. This is not made from grapes. There are no grapes in this at all. The ingredient in this is honey. And I was all excited to surprise you with mead. Oh my gosh. And right before the episode, you texted me and was like, I'm bringing some mead. So he already knew. 
Yeah. He already knows. I don't know though. It's from Montana, from a guy named Ken Schultz, who started out as a kid in Ohio and his uncle was right. a chemist that used to turn juice into wine. So started doing wine making as a hobby. And he moved to Montana with his wife. They lived in a teepee because Montana. And he kept making his wine, but I guess in like the late 80s, the grapes were eh, And a friend came over with a five gallon bucket of crystallized honey. What? And I have no idea how you make mead, but he's like, let me try my wine making process on the honey. Sick. And they have this amazing mead and people loved it. And he eventually became a mead maker. And it's won a ton of awards. I've never had it. I have no idea what to expect. I assume it's gonna be sweet. Yes. You should also have your meat chilled. I would highly recommend yeah. chilling it compared to room temperature. The flavor profile is all different. See, that's good so to know. And I didn't even enjoyment. think to ask you because I was trying to surprise you. <laughs> so. I am surprised and bewildered. And, and they did alive. say like there's a wax cover rather than a paper cover and they're like, just pull the cork through the wax. So wish me luck. Uh huh. So a meat maker, sometimes called mazers, okay. spent most of their time holding their crap. Mazers. Mazers. Oh, that was a pretty that easy cork That was easy. Pull. I missed that. I like the red wax. I'm already into the bottle. And this one has this like awesome Viking. I know they did a lot of bad things, the Vikings, but you know, they look so badass. So there's that. And they know their drinks. Apparently they used to call this the nectar of the gods. Yes, nectar and of the gods. it was the official drink of royalty. I feel like back in the day when royalty was rough and tumble, not in this like uptight behind a gate kind of royalty. The royalty that used to be like off with their heads. All right, I have no idea what the tasting protocol on meat is. So I'm gonna do all the wine tasting protocols. I'm gonna look at it. Mm -hmm. It's a little, this one's a little bit misty compared to the red wine. Or I is mean, that just the, the mead cold wine glass? That I do you think it's just the cold glass? It might be. It okay. looks like a traditional white wine. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how the flavors. Yeah, like explode. if I was just coming up on this, I would think it was a white wine. Let's yeah. smell it and see it. Okay, well, you know what? It smells very natural. Like I smell like almost tree bark in it. And and something floral, like like it doesn't smell sweet like sugar, it smells sweet like a flower. Like honey. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't feel like it smells like honey. Do you feel like it smells like honey? No, 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 no. This one's not as potent. Okay, as I'm going in. I don't know what the hell it's supposed to smell like or taste like. Please, no, Lisa. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, cheers. This cheers is a major cheers. Yes, thank you. Well, it tastes like honey. Mm. It tastes like honey wine. Like if you made wine from honey, that's what this tastes like. It's actually fucking delicious. Mm. And I'm not a big sweets person. Oh, mm. am I missing out? No, no, let's make me no, dance. This is the jam. Don't stop dancing when wow. I start dancing. Danny, I- Get in I, here, let me, get in here. Let me, yeah, let me course, pour you, honors, Danny. Honors, Please. Ooh, look at that, look at that. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Let's get the off camera. Here, let me hear. Oh, no, that smells like honey. I did not smell honey. Taste it. Mm. Yeah. Boy. And it tastes like honey. And it tastes like honey, but it doesn't taste as sugary as honey. And so that's why, that's why I think it's called Nectar of the Gods. So like back in the day, right? When like people, the most exciting dish was like, oh, it's a hair. I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna gut it. I'm gonna plick it. And then like, that's a delicious meal. But like, that's not that great. Come on. <laughs> this, this is Nectar of the Gods. This is delicious. Oh my God. Everything that is hard for me about white wines, all the astringency and the tartness and all that, this has none of that. It does taste a little there's thicker. Something, there's something at the end, there's something at the end. It's got a teensy weensy little bit of like eraser flavor. What? <laughs> some kind of little flavor that you I, well. eraser? I like, should, <laughs> mess I up your pencil. mistakes? Yeah, like it's some flavor that I cannot. Oh, I can smell that. I can't quite place it except that, you know when you chew on your pencil when you're in school? Oh kids, back in the day we used to use pencils in school. It was this like wooden stick that had graphite in it and a, and a little kind of rubber piece on the end that you could make your pencil marks disappear with and that's the eraser. You're right. I don't want to accept what you say, but I will tolerate it. Okay, what is it then? Because you, you said there's something else in it. It's something slightly bitey and slightly dull. Bitey is a very good terminology for the end of this one. I'm gonna go grab an eraser for you to try real quick. <laughs> and I'm gonna lick an eraser. <laughs> Maybe it's an eraser with pencil shavings in it. A little okay. bit of, Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe the pencil the shavings graphite will change it. Part, yeah. Yeah. Is it a fresh eraser or used? These, these Still are fantastic. Cool. I am not against the eraser. I, I know it's an unusual thing to say, but I have to say, that's amazing. I had no idea what I was in for. I thought it would be so sugary that I would not like it, but I like it. They win awards. I can see why. I'm gonna top you off before we Please try do. our next thing because obviously we both loved this. Blessed. And when you go on the internet, you ask what pairs with mead. 
everyone on the internet thinks they're so funny because they're like another glass of mead pairs with mead, which we're doing, so they're not wrong. But I really wanted to get some kind of appetizer pairing. And finally, some nice person was like, if you must pair food with mead. <laughs> if you must. If you must. How dare a you. plain cheesecake is the best pairing. I myself think I make a wonderful cheesecake. So go ahead and grab yourself a cheesecake bite. A, a what cheesecake? A cheesecake? wonderful cheesecake. Oh wow. Right. I have to <laughs> like it for my life is what I'm hearing right now. <laughs> oh. Well no, and you might or you might not. And I'm I and no offense if you don't. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I need privacy. <laughs> it's not bad, right? I accidentally found out I'm really good at making cheesecake, by the way. Accidentally? Like you <laughs> fell down and you made a cheesecake? <laughs> and it was glorious. That's like superpower level. <laughs> we got a pair, we got a pair. Dude, we got a pair, we got a pair. Right, we're doing a show here. Hold on. Oh my god, I'm so afraid. Nope, nope, nope. Don't like what it did. Nope. Nope. What do you think? Like it offends me to my core, personally, because like I love mead. But the cheesecake is amazing. Honestly. It is, it is, it's true. But I want to put it down so I can enjoy my mead again. I'm gonna cleanse my palate with some water so I can enjoy the mead. By the way, I'm on a huge riser. <laughs> This man is gigantic. <laughs> Welcome right. back, movie magic right there. All right. I'll be back to that cheesecake, don't get me wrong, but this mead is so good. You didn't cleanse your palate. You gotta cleanse your palate so that you, oh, maybe a cracker? With what? Some, okay, what? Yeah, yeah. With what? You do all this work and they don't even fucking notice. There's a lot of cussing on this episode. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> so, this is a first for Call Me A Cab. Our guest brought alcohol and I'm so excited. So I have no information, so all the information about this is gonna come from you. But I did provide the glassware and I'm kind of excited because I don't know what we're getting. I just brought up random glassware that I've had in my life. You get to choose what glassware feels appropriate awesome. or not for what we've got and you can tell us about what we're trying. First we got traditional Korean dessert wine, wine called Bek Seju. So my family used to drink this all the time when we were done eating Korean food. It's rice based, mm. it's refreshing, it's crisp. They give it to you usually like in like a little, like a little, like, like a shot glass, little shot like glass and you just, you just sip it. This is my favorite mead. It's Irish mead, it's called Boon Ratty. It's the jam. Anyone who comes to my place, I try to pimp it and push it on them. Like you must try this, it's a rite of passage. Hope you enjoy it. If you don't, more for me, but I <laughs> love it. And then this is credit to my friend and roommate, Dallas Isbell. So he came back from visiting his family. He's like, you guys gotta try this wine. It's called Lambrusco. It's like $4.99. It's the shit. And I'm like, $5? Come on, man. I'm like, I'm not being a snob, but like, it can't be that good. So he popped that <laughs> top, he poured that thing, and... And it was good. It was amazing. All right, so let's, uh, we'll start off with the rice wine. Excellent. So yeah, again, traditional Korean rice wine, finishing off a meal. I like it. It's not too sweet, but it's crisp, it's refreshing. I've had rice wine before. I like rice-based things, but I'm not usually a big dessert wine person, so I'm curious how I'm gonna feel about this. Good luck. All right, let's smell it and see what it smells like. It smells like earth. Which yes, rice comes from the earth? Yes, that's a great example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna taste it. It's not that far off from the mead we had. It's like a little... It's like two steps down. It's a little it's grassier. Yeah. Grass is good. It's more open, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know why? Because it's not as thick. It's thinner. Yeah. So typically you get just a little thing and just the end of your meal, just to cleanse your and palate. And it's not and too off. sweet. It's not too sweet. Mm -hmm. Oh. What is this? <laughs> oh, I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> Beck says you. Beck says you. Very you. impressive. All right, what do you got? What's Ooh, next? Round two. All right, so this next one is Boon Ready Meat. It's about 2% stronger than the last meat we had. And this one is actually from out of country. It's from Ireland. I'm from Ireland. You better like it. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> Fresh on. I first fell in love with mead because I had mead at the Ren Fair. So I've been like chasing that white rabbit. And this is as close to that that I can I found. So excited. And as you can see from the color of this one, this one's much more Oh, it's like golden. very golden, yeah. It's like, ah, uh, these glasses are gold, so you can't truly see. But I mean, well, but yeah, no, it's pour. true. Ugh. I feel like we should toast because you like mead so much. Here's being the first guest back. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, it was hard to smell in these glasses with the wide brim. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, it's a little fruity. It's very fruity, extremely Like fruity. the other one was like tasted like honey. This one tastes like peaches or nectarines or something. Oh, interesting. I never thought about that before. 
Oh. Come on, don't you be shy. <laughs> don't you be shy. You get up in the here. Camera, man. Yes, sir. -y. I think you're going to like this pants. <laughs> so this smells like honey and oak. Oak? He's so good. Yeah. This Dude, nose is unbelievable. You're blessed. Wow. Yeah. So I wonder if they ferment these in oak barrels. No, you probably did. Watch you probably guess did. right. You might be right. Here's all you need for fermentation. Yeast and sugar. And time. Fruit has nat and time. Fruit has natural sugars, and then honey isn't a fruit, but it has its natural sugars. And yeast is sometimes just airborne. So you can have an apricot tree with rotting apricots, and they can become fermented. Yes. And squirrels can eat them and get drunk, and it's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this does taste like apricots and honey. Yep. It tastes like a pie. It tastes like pie filling. That's actually really colorful and descriptive. Nice job. Thank you. You just did that. Thank you. I wonder what the caloric info is don't on look, this. Don't, don't, well, don't you, look. We can't tell because there isn't nutrition information on these things. There isn't. And do you know why on that? Because we live in a lie. Because we live in a lie. Okay, that's fantastic. We still have one more to go. I want all the rest of the guests to please bring their own alcohol with. <laughs> BYOB. Come on now. So next one is the Lambrusco. Trader Joe's BevMo, $4.99. Beautiful bottle, beautiful presentation. I think it's a great wine. Now, you, when you said the four ninety nine scared you, and I try not to be intimidated. Which is snooty, but sure. No, but okay, but why is that? I feel like it's like, you know, there's just so many just cabs and Savion Blancs that just taste, you know, the same across the board. But like, when I drink wine, I personally, like, I, I'm looking for that experience. Like, I want, like, ooh, this is something unique. This is like, it, it just enhances the meal and the experience. And like, typically, my mind is like, oh, it's cheap. It can't do that. It can't possibly. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. It did it. Now it's got the pop, so it's fizzy? Yes. Okay. You I don't know it. what the heck I'm doing. You want to pop for. it? No, no, no. I'll let you pop. Do you want to? Like, I always cover mine when I pop because I'm afraid oh, that it's going to hit no. me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. See, this actually scares me because it wow. looks like fizzy grape soda. But it, it's, it's subtle. All right, I'm going to smell it first. Yes. Well, it's I, very grape. These glasses are really hard to smell because part because they just go out, so the smell just goes away. But this is no offense what I'm about to say because I smell these things and it usually means I don't like the taste. It smells a little footy to me. Footsy, sick. Ew. This this smells like blood. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah. It smells like blood. Like a bloody foot. <laughs> but that's not necessarily bad. If you for those of you who have watched this show. If it smells weird, I'm usually like, this is delicious. And for those of you who are new, I'm sorry, we're kind of gross here. Okay, I'm just gonna try it. I have no idea what I'm gonna get into. Mm. That's right. It's grapey. Super it is grapey. grapey. The, the fuzz is soft, not like a Pellegrino. It's like less than that. Oh, that's interesting. This would be good with ice. What do you mean ice? Like ice. I, like oh, ice, ice cubes. cubes. Over ice. Okay, cool, cool. I just I thought I misunderstood. I'm like, ice, what are you talking about? All right, yeah. cool, cool. cool. <laughs> Yeah, I like it's it. It's so hot in here that he's like, I forgot what ice was. <laughs> you know what? It's good. It's good, but I have to say, I like both of the other wines better. I'm not this mad at you. It's $4.99. So. And that's the main thing. I feel like if you like it, especially if it's affordable, like you can always have this in your house. You'd be like, pick up some butter, some milk, and some Lambrusco, so we're always stocked. And you can forget the butter and milk if we're low on cash. <laughs> All right, so I have a question for you after all of the wines we've tasted, some of yours and some of mine. Do you have a favorite of the day? Oh yeah, straight up. I can't say my mead, because my mead, I love my mead. You do love but mead. I really liked your cab, your cab. Oh, more than the cab. mead that I had. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't that interesting? I really like that cab. That was all right. really, really nice. Let's revisit that cab then right now. Oh, it was my arm, how do you? I know. Yes. Now we're back with the caretaker cab. I feel like we should toast a little bit of a big toast. I'm gonna say a couple words. I'm gonna let you say a couple words. Oh, all right. It doesn't have to be fancy. Sure, 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 sure. It's from the heart. Mm -hmm. Because uh -huh. I'm thrilled that we are having episodes with guests again. Yeah. So here's to you being my first guest back. Here's to you bringing wine, your own wine, to the show and other things. So cool. And here's to us both continuing on the trajectory of success that we were sort of just getting a taste of pre-COVID <laughs> and hopefully it keeps going after COVID. So yeah. here's that. That's what I have to say. And what do you have to say? Well, one, thank you for having me to Danny. 
man behind oh, the camera yeah, right, and the snaws of the hour. Snaws of the hour. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Joanne. Yeah. Uh, huge fan of the show. I'm ecstatic to be here. And like, I love that you're doing this. You're putting your own thing forward, which is great. Mm. So happy. Cheers to health. Cheers to friends. Yeah. And better 2021. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Cheers to that. Ah, mm, okay, that's, that's just nice. good. That is so, well done. Whatever you are, whoever you are, you're like that person that shows up at the party and you're like, everybody liked that guy. Who was it? I don't, don't know. He didn't don't, come don't with stop, me. Don't quit. Just keep going. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of Dallas. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next time. <laughs> I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cat.